Good evening. I'm Leslie Corlatis, the Director of Religious Education. On behalf of Father John Fan, our pastor, Father Nestor Sanchez, our associate, we welcome you and Bishop Hicks to Holy Family. We ask that everyone keep their masks on at all times in church and outside on the parish grounds. Please social distance in your pew if someone is not from your immediate family. There is no picture taking before, during, or after mass. Professional photos of the anointing will be available for purchase in the gym after mass. Please have one member from the family go to the gym for the photo and confirmation certificate. There will be no procession for communion. The Eucharist will be brought to your pew. Thank you for being a special part of our confirmation mass. Good evening and welcome to Holy Family. We are blessed to have you worship with us tonight and hope you will return to worship with us again. Tonight, we celebrate the Sacrament of Confirmation. Our presider this evening is Bishop Ronald Hicks. At this time, I ask you to please silence all electronic devices and invite you to rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. With your spirit. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. We have a beautiful day today, and not only weather-wise, but it's beautiful because so many of you are going to be confirmed with this sacrament of confirmation today. And as I look out and I see your masks and your social distancing, I can't help but think that you will never forget when you look at your pictures from years to come that you were confirmed during a time of pandemic. Regardless, however, remember that no matter how crazy things get in our lives, in our world, that God is always with us, that the Holy Spirit is with us, leading us and guiding us, and we are never abandoned. So with that great faith, we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, recalling our faults and sins, and asking for God's mercy and forgiveness. Together we pray, I confess yes. to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my, my fault, through my, my fault, fault through my, my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, 
to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit coming near and dwelling graciously within us may make us a perfect temple of his glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them and everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom, another the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit, another faith by the same Spirit, another gifts of healing by one Spirit, another mighty deeds, 
another prophecy, another disconcernment of spirits, another varieties of tongues, another interpretations of tongues. But one and the same spirit produces all of these, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. From one spirit we were baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Will the candidate for confirmation please stand? Most Reverend Bishop Hicks, I present these candidates for confirmation and attest that they are prepared to receive this sacrament of Christian initiation. Father John, to you, Father Nestor, Deacon. Carl, the teachers, catechists, and formators, family and friends who have formed these candidates for confirmation, I say to all of you, thank you. Thank you for not only forming them, but for sharing your faith with them. And on behalf of the church, I gladly accept your testimony. Thank you. Please be seated. Who are you? Quien eres? Who are you? It's an important
important and provocative question, who you are. If you were to ask me, who am I? I'd tell you some basics like my name. It's Ron Hicks. I'm 53 years old. I grew up in the south suburbs of Chicago at St. Jude the Apostle in South Holland. I went to Quigley South High School. I speak Spanish. Aprendí en México y también viví en El Salvador por cinco años. I was ordained a priest in 1994. And just five weeks ago, I was installed as your new bishop here in the Diocese of Joliet. Well, thank you for that. And you know, that's just a little bit about who I am, but really, I've forgotten to tell you the most important part. Who am I? I'm a child of God, baptized, a missionary disciple, and confirmed. Now that's only one sentence, but there's a lot going on in that one sentence. So let me unpack it for you. To say that I'm a child of God, to say that you're a child of God, recognizes that all of us are made in the image and likeness of God. We are truly God's sons and daughters, and the scripture reminds us that we are beloved. I'm baptized. In baptism, my original sin was forgiven. I was incorporated into a family of God called the church, and through the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, I was given the gift of eternal life. I'm confirmed. Being confirmed means I've been sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit is with me and with you always to lead us and to guide us especially in some of the most challenging moments of our lives. In the readings today, we've seen the first reading how God from the beginning has and wants a relationship with us. Then in that second reading, we're reminded that there is one spirit but shares a variety of gifts with all of us. And then in the gospel, it gives us the playbook, the game plan of how do you live out the Christian faith. We live the Christian faith as missionary disciples. Disciples means that we will follow God. We follow Jesus and his message. And as missionary disciples, it also means that we are willing to to not think about just our comfort and my life and my relationship with God, but we put our faith into action and we think about the poor and the other and the marginalized and the stranger. And we want to pass our faith on. Parents and grandparents, wouldn't you say that you hold that in your hearts, that you do want to pass the faith that you have in Jesus through the Catholic Church on to the next generation, and then they're going to pass it on to the next generation. That's our hope. None of us ever want to be the last generation that has faith and belongs to the church. That's what it means to be a missionary disciple. You share it with the next generation. Tonight, on your confirmation, I have three invitations for you. The first invitation is going out to the candidates. Candidates, when you come forward for this sacrament of confirmation, I want you to come forward with open and peaceful hearts. Now, I was confirmed in 1979 when I was in seventh grade back at St. Jude the Apostle. And I think I had an open heart. I loved God. I was ready to be confirmed. 
but I'm not sure if I approached the sacrament with a peaceful heart. And why is that? It was because we were told that the bishop was going to ask questions of us about the faith, about confirmation, etc. And if we didn't know the answers, he was going to then turn and ask our sponsor. So <laughs> I went in worried and anxious, thinking to myself, I, I know the catechism. I, I've learned this. But what if I'm so nervous I can't remember? I'm going to look silly. And I know if he asks my sponsor, my sponsor's not going to come up with the right answer. So I was nervous, and my heart was not peaceful. Candidates, that's not the feeling I want for you. I do want your hearts to be open and peaceful. So when you approach the sacrament, I make a promise to you. I am not going to ask you any questions. I'm not going to put you on the spot. I'm not even going to chit-chat back and forth with you. Instead, as you're standing there, I want you to pray that the same Holy Spirit that came upon the apostles over 2,000 years ago comes upon you today and you receive that Holy Spirit in your mind, your hearts, and your souls. Second invitation, it goes out to the sponsors. Sponsors, have you ever wondered why the candidate chose you to be their sponsor? They might not want to admit it, but I imagine it's because they see something good in you, something right, something just, something holy. Today, when you come forward and present your candidate for confirmation, I want you to do so with pride and with love. But also, as you're standing there, make a commitment to yourself and to God that you will continue to be a good example to that candidate. A good example by the way you pray, a good example by the way you go to church, a good example how you put your faith into action. Finally, my last invitation goes to everyone else, the rest of us who are here in this church. Instead of counting how many confirmandi we have and then extrapolating how long this is going to take, use the time to pray and think about it. Our world, our lives are so crazy, so busy, so complicated. They're filled with so much noise. How often do we get to have the opportunity to sit in a church in front of the Eucharistic Lord, surrounded by other believers, and simply pray? Take it as a gift. Take it as an opportunity to pray for the candidates, for yourself, for your own intentions, your family, your friend, the world, the church, whatever intentions you might have. So, those are the three invitations I have for all of you today. Do they sound doable? Yeah, sound okay? We've got a deal, more or less? I hope so. Finally, if anyone ever asks you, who are you? Quien eres tu? Tell them the truth. Give them the basics, your name, your age, where you grew up, perhaps where you went to school. But never, ever forget who you really are. You are a child of God, baptized, a missionary disciple. And as of today, many of you can also add that you are confirmed and sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit.
this time I'm going to ask that just the candidates for confirmation to please stand. And candidates, at your baptism, it was probably your parents and your godparents who answered these baptismal promises for you. Tonight, as young adults, you are taking on a commitment, a responsibility to not only answer these promises on your own, but to live them out in your life. So with a strong voice, with a loud voice, with courage and with strength, I invite you to please respond, I do, after each question. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? And do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? And do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through a special sacrament of confirmation, is given to you just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost. Amen. And do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Amen. This is our faith. This is the faith of our church, and we're proud to profess it through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this point, I'm going to invite everyone to please stand with the candidates. And candidates, I just want to remind you of the instructions that you've received. When you do come forward, I'm going to rub chrism oil on your forehead, and I'm going to be saying to you, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Your response to me is amen. When you're saying amen, you're saying, yes, I believe this. Amen, you're accepting it. So be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then I'm going to say to you, peace be with you. And you're going to respond to me by saying, and with your spirit, so that we can share that spirit of peace. Candidates, can you please bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these, your servants, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit.
my brothers and sisters, let us stand as we now present our prayers and our petitions to our loving God. For these sons and daughters of God, confirmed by the gift of the Spirit, that they give witness to Christ by lives built on faith and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For their parents and sponsors who led them in faith, that by word and example they may always encourage them to follow the way of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, in union with Francis, our Pope, Ronald Hicks, our Bishop, and all the bishops, that God, who gathers us together by the Holy Spirit, may help us grow in unity of faith and love until his Son returns in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people of every race and nation, that they may acknowledge the one God as Father, and bound together as one human family, seek God's kingdom, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the youth of the church, endowed with the special gifts and abilities, may they be open to the Spirit, who calls each to a special vocation, including religious life and priesthood, and may they embrace their calling with joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and willed that through them and their successors the same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful, listen favorably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants, and grant that, being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him as they share in the memorial of his redemption, by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out 
the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Christ, our Lord, to whom, to the 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, God, Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Together we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. And God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Este es el Cordero de Dios que quita el pecado del mundo, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us stand and pray. Accompany with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and their charity foster her growth in the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, Bishop Hick, uh, on behalf of our powers, uh, all, all of us uh, welcome you to our uh, diocese. We are very thrilled and very uh, uh, joy to uh, see you here in our diocese of Joliet. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. And, uh, And most of all, thank you for coming to our parish today to confirm our uh, children, uh, our, I should say, young adult, uh, for their uh, next step of their faith life. Uh, your word and your uh, kindness that it's shown to us, it's very, very appreciated. I would like to thank all the uh, candidates. Uh, now we call it confirmandies, all parents and godparents. Uh, I want to thank all the um, parish staff, uh, deacons and uh, priests and seminarians and all of us here together to celebrate a very special day today. So thank you for your, uh, for your dedication to your children. Thank you for your dedica dedication to our parish. Thank you. Good. And to you, Father John, you uh, had the opportunity to express words of gratitude to me and to just about everybody here. Let me express uh, gratitude to you also for your priesthood, for your pastoral leadership, and all the ways that you lead people in the faith. Thank you to you. Thank you. <laughs> and before I give the final blessing to all of you, but especially to the candidates, I ask that you please pray for me, the bishop who confirmed you, and know that when you are praying for me, I am praying for you, and I'm going to be praying for you especially tonight and doing so with great gratitude. It was my true joy and honor to be here with all of you tonight to celebrate this powerful sacrament of confirmation. So before we conclude, 
why don't we express our love, our affection, and our congratulations to all the confirmandi with a strong round of applause. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. May God, the Almighty Father, bless you, whom he has made as adopted sons and daughters, reborn from water and the Holy Spirit. And may he keep you worthy of his fatherly love. Amen. Amen. May his only begotten Son, who promised that the Spirit of Truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power in the confession of the true faith. Amen. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit, who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples, bless you and lead you blameless and gathered as one into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Bring us, shine on.